بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فيكون في أمتي ثلاثون كذابون دجالون there will be approximately thirty liars deceivers كلهم يزعم أنه نبي each one of them will claim prophethood وأنا خاتم النبيين لا نبي بعدي I am the last of prophets. I am the seal of prophethood. After me, there will be no Nabi to come. As a riwayat, akhirum al-awr al-dajjal, the last of these liars, these cons, these people that proclaim prophethood will be the dajjal, minhum arba niswa. Among these thirty, four of them will be women. So imposters, Liars will come in the Ummah that will claim prophethood. We can imagine when Dajjal will come just before him. If it is part of the plan and a Dajjal does come who is not the real Dajjal. Can you imagine what a test it will be if there is a Dajjal and he is the fake Dajjal. And people in the world believe he is the Dajjal and they will expose him. Then the real Dajjal will come and this first Dajjal, when people plan a bank robbery or plan to do something or they want to infiltrate a structure, they have a decoy. The decoy is to distract everybody from the real plan. So Dajjal may have a decoy as well where people will think, so, okay, this is Dajjal, then Isa alayhi salam the Dajjal will come as Isa, the Masih, the Messiah and wipe out this Dajjal and he will have the traits and the sifat of Isa salam, or as mentioned in the hadith of the different powers and capabilities. So that's also one possibility. Amongst the people that have passed and Qadi Ayaz has mentioned that had al hadith Qad Zahara, we have seen many of these liars that have come. Amongst them was Al-Aswad Al-Anasi in the, uh, the last part of, part of the life of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was in Yemen and he claimed Nubuat. And uh, he, the war was declared, some military action was taken there in Yemen for three to, to four months. Nabi Alayhi Salaam sent a letter to the people of Yemen and he requested them and urged them to fight against him. He was killed in his house and his wife assisted in killing him. She was forced by him to marry her and her husband had been killed by this Kadhab. She was part of the people of Iman. After that Islam prevailed in Yemen. Then uh, there was Tudayha ibn Khawailid al Asri. He also fought against the Muslims. Later he reverted and got Hidayat and he joined the Muslim army. Then the famous Musaylama Kadhab, he claimed Nubuat and he said that the revelation in Wahi used to come in the dark. Abu Bakr sent the army where Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, Ikram bin Abi Jahl, Shurahbil bin Hassana, etc. were in that army and uh, there was a decisive battle which took place. Musaylama was defeated in this battle and he was killed by Wahshi. Then came Sajjah bint al-Harith. She was a Christian Arab woman and she claimed uh, Nubuat after the death of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. She took play, fought in uh, many battles and the neighboring tribes in the Yamama. There where she met Musaylama. She believed that he was also a prophet and he married her. When Muslima was killed, then she embraced Islam and became a practicing Muslim. Then Mukhtar ibn Abi Ubaid al thaqafi this uh, person claimed Nubuat at the time of the Tabi'in, and he used to say that Jibreel used to come down, down with Wahi. Then Al Harith ibn Sa'id, who pretended that he was a great Abid in Damishk. And then after that he claimed Nubuat. This was in the Zamana in Iraq, Al-Malik ibn al-Marwan. 
he was uh, found and executed. So many eras had Kadhabun Dajjalun among the latest. Uh, 1835-1908, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, he used to say that Wahi used to come from the Asman, and he wrote almost, because he was prolific in his writings and his speech, he drew a big crowd, he wrote more than 90 books, and he had around 400,000 followers in around 1908 when there was a challenge with Hazrat Maulana Shaykh Tanawullah, and in the debate, he said that whoever is the liar, Allah will inflict a disease upon him, which would cause his death. And a year later, it happened that Ghulam Ahmed became inflicted with his sickness, whether it's true or not, Allah alam, that he died away, died in the toilet, he passed away in the toilet. So we have to be concerned that this Kadhabun Dajjalun, it will come because the fitna of the Jali Sat, we won't be able to differentiate. We have to be careful and to make a lot of dua, read Surah Al Kaf, and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this fitan. Then another sign of Qiyamah la taqumu sa'ahata takhruj narun min ardi al hijaz. A fire will come out from Hijaz, the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula. To the ul anak and the necks of the camel will become visible bi Busra. So we find from Medina Munawara to Busra it's around 985 kilometers. There was an earthquake which took place, um, and that uh, fire remained for three months, and it is said that the woman of Medina could spin thread by its light. <laughs> the fire was so bright, the women of Medina could spin thread by its light. And they say this happened uh, around the third of Jumad al ukhra on the 654 year after Hijri. There was a great sound and uh, walls, roofs and beams shook for hours in Medina Munawara, a great fire from Harra, close to Banu Quraiza, which could be seen from Medina Munawara. They say the rivers of fire flowed like water to a valley which was called Shaza, which threw out sparks as big as castles. The volcano which occurred in historical sources, they say it was 654 after Israel 1256, is we, it lasted for 52 days and the lava reached 23 kilometers north from the crater. It reached in today's time where the Medina Munora airport is, it reached the lava, it stopped there, which is approximately 12 kilometers from Medina Munora. The volcanic eruption is approximately 916 meters above sea level. So that great fire, that sign has already occurred. Grevarius Muhaddithin have explained and said, وَالَّذِي ظَارَ لِي أَنَّ النَّارَ الْمَذْكُورَ هِيَ الَّتِي ظَهَرَتْ بِنَوَاهِ الْمَدِينَةِ Ibn Hajar in his Fatul Bari mentions that. Likewise, Imam Nawi also mentions that أَخْبَرْنِي مَنْ حَضَرَهَا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ خَرَجَتْ فِي زَمَانِنَا نَارْ بِالْمَدِينَةِ that in the same era which we've been mentioned, he said, I've been informed by the people of Medina about this fire, and he also confirms. Likewise, Ibn Kathir says the fire was so bright. Shahadu anak al ibil fi dawi hadhin nar. That the brightness of this fire, as Nabi Ali Salam said, that the necks of the camel, it as if it was like daytime and you can see your camels vividly. This fire was so bright. Then another sign is La taqumu sa'a hatta yuqatil. A time will come where my ummah will fight a Turk. The Turk. And the description of the said, Hujuhum, they will have faces, and their faces will be like hammered shields. They will have 
small eyes, red faces, flat noses. And they will wear yalbasuna wa yamshuna fi They will wear clothing made of hair and shoes made of hair. Sigar al ayun. And the eyes will be small. So one, one explanation was in the Umayyad Khalifa when they defeated the Turks and the booty was taken from them. There are some mention of Dhul Qarnayn and there were 21 tribes, 20 were arrested and one of them was left. Allah knows best. There is another mention of Genghis Khan, the Mongolian Tatars who invaded the Muslim lands and that was also around 656 after Hijri or 1258 Isawi. So that sign has also occurred. Another sign also is Antaghlu Al-Khayl that the value of horses will become very expensive. If we take the literal meaning of just the horse, then if we look today the most expensive horse that has been sold, sold for around 70 million dollars, around 54 million pounds. That was in the year 2000. Another horse that was sold was an American bred horse which was sold for 40 million dollars. So if we just take the literal meaning of horses, then we see in the last 20 years what prices and escalation of horses have occurred is phenomenal. And if we take the meaning of vehicles, because that was the means of conveyance, then we see in the last 20 years, and why I mention specifically last or recent, for us to understand that this is the climax, probably Allah knows best, never in history has the value of these items gone so high like now. For example, a Bugatti brand new out of the box goes for around 19 million, Pagani 17.5 million dollars, Rolls Royce 13 million dollars, another Bugatti 8 million dollars, Mercedes-Benz Maybach, $8 million, Koenigsegg, $4.8 million. These are prices for just one vehicle, just one vehicle. If we look at the classic vehicles that have been sold, 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO, $48 million. That was in 2018. 1962 Ferrari, Ferrari 250 GTO, 38 million dollars in 2014 1957 Ferrari 335 Sport 35 million dollars in 2016 1956 Ferrari 28 million dollars sold in 2015 1967 Ferrari 275 GTB Spider 27.5 million dollars sold in 2013. These are just in the last 10 years. So we can see prices have escalated and these vehicles are becoming more valuable by the day. If we have to just take another conveyance and just, just for our understanding of how conveyances have become expensive, a simple Bicycle is sold for $500,000, $500,000. Other bicycles have been sold for $200,000, $160,000. Motorcycles have been sold for around $11 million. So this sign literally is reaching its climax. We need to have concern we need to make a concerted effort. A sign is something which gives you direction. All the signs that we are hearing should be a sign to give us direction to find our Allah, give us direction 
to make amal on the sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amal that we should do in our lives, we did leave, see the Surah Al-Fatiha we should read before we sleep, after every salah, we should make it a habit to blow what Surah Fatiha for hifadhat and protection, the entrances of our houses, and make it a routine. One traveler was traveling and he came to a deserted house. There was no place to stay. People offered him that house. They said, but it, it is possibly haunted. He said, I'm not worried about those things. So he spent the night and he started hearing loud sounds. So he started reading Ayatul Kursi and when he came to the Ayah, he co continued reciting it repeatedly. And as the morning just came for the time of Fajr and he rose, he heard a voice saying, Today you've killed a very evil bad jinn. And he looked on his side and he seen a form like dust or ashes. So these ayat which Allah and His Rasul have left for us, these wazaif, are very powerful amal. We think it to be insignificant, but we have no idea what's the value in the end seen well. Then Surah Baqarah, part of that read was Ayatul Qursi, part of that is the last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, Baynama Jibreel Qaidun in the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Jibreel was once by Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam seated in front of him, and a sound was heard, فَرَفَ رَعْسَهُ they lifted their heads and they looked, and he said, هَذَا بَابٌ مِّنَ السَّمَا فُتِحَ لَمْ يُفْتَحْ قَدْتُ that this is a door in the heavens that has never been opened up before except today. And an angel has descended. Such an angel that has never ever set foot and descended on earth. So salam was made. وَقَالَ Abashir binurain, glad tidings with the two lights. You have been given such a treasure. Lam yu'tahuma nabiyun qablaka. No nabi has been given this previously. One was Surah Al Fatiha, and second was the ending of Surah Al Baqarah. Anybody who reads it, minha illa u'titahu except that they will get in Allah kataba kitaban qabla ay yakhluq as-samawati wal ard 2000 years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and earth he had written in a book ayatain khatama bihim surah al-baqarah the two ayat which Allah concluded surah baqarah لا تقران في دار ثلاث ليال in any house that it is red and the shaitan cannot be in that house so we should try to make it a habit to read these ayat of surah baqarah another riwayat min kanzih alladhi taht al arsh it is from amongst the treasures under the arsh of allah fata'allamuhunna wa'allimuhunna Learn it as much as you can and teach it to your wives, to your children. فَإِنَّهُمَا صَلَاةٌ وَقُرْآنٌ وَدُعَاءٌ It has multiple benefits. Another riwayat, مَنْ قَرَعَ بِالْآيَتَيْنِ مِنْ آخِرِ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ Whoever reads this ayat in the evening, كَفَّتَاهُ It will suffice him. A. Suffice him from all needs. كُلِّ الشَّيْطَانِ تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ It will suffice him and protect him from all the shayateen. كَفَتَاهُ مَا يَكُونُ مِنَ الْآفَاتِ All calamities and issues and problems a person can ever have, he'll be protected. وَكَفَتَاهُ أَجْرًا وَثَّوَابًا It will be suffice, it will suffice you for a lot of reward and ajr in the akhirah. May Allah give us the of making amal wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.